Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've downloaded Google Earth Pro to your desktop and have launched it. And I'll go ahead and launch mine now. One of the things that I forgot to mention in the last video is that Google has announced for some time now that they will be discontinuing Google Earth Pro uh, sometime in the future, but not until they add the functionality that is uh, in Google Earth Pro now that's not on the Google Earth web. Uh, so at some point we may expect to see that, but for now, Google Earth Pro is still with us and here it is. I wanna show you some basic functionality. This is our menu bar across the top, pretty standard. Then we have the toolbar across the, the top of the, of the window here. This is the sidebar with our My Places section, our Layers section, and another one I'll show you in a minute. And then let me turn on the status bar, which is down here. And you might not have noticed it, but it, it uh, basically is um, giving us location information and so forth. Normally I have the status bar turned off. I don't want to have a bunch of distracting coordinates uh, from uh, distracting from the video. So, but that's what the status bar is at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so let's start with the menu bar uh, about Google Earth Pro. So um, again, this is version 7.32. Its build date was last year and it's been running for some time now. Okay, here's preferences and we're gonna spend a lot of time inside the preferences uh, later on in the training and I'll get back to that later uh, services don't worry about hide quit the standard stuff okay let's go over to file and our save options now um, Google Earth does allow you to save but it saves in 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 weird formats uh, I won't go into the depth of that right now but uh, you do need to be able to save your places and what my places are I'll go through in a minute um, you can email different views or share the views, the current view that you have. You can also view it in Google Maps, print X, import, etc. Uh, edit, um, there's not much, I, I don't spend much time on the edit tab. I guess you can copy an image um, and you can copy a view location and load that into say a, an email or, or, or something. View, okay, so we can hide or show the toolbar. So you can see now I've just hidden the toolbar. Let's go back and turn it back on. We can hide or view the sidebar and that will come in handy later as well. But for now I will show it. Uh, we can show the, the view size. So let's, we can kind of really make it a lot smaller if your if your screen is is a smaller screen show navigation let's turn that on and I, I either show it always or show it never and I'll show you what it is so you'll see our navigation pops up over here and I'll show you more on that in a minute status bar we already talked about we can turn on a grid so we see the grid lines for latitude and longitude can be pretty handy. Um, I like to show it with it off, just because again, I don't want the distraction on the video. So let's turn that off. Overview map. Basically, if you're, if you're really zoomed in, it'll show you where you're at. You can see the little red box that kind of identifies where you're, where you're at and you can see it moving across. So let's go back out. And again, when I'm scroll, when I'm uh, zooming in and out here, I'm just scrolling on the scroll wheel of the mouse. We can show the atmosphere or not show it. Let's see what it looks kind of, we'd have to be at a different view to really see it, but let's turn it off and you can see what happens it's, is it just goes away there. I kind of like it. It looks kind of nice, so I leave it on. Go to the sun. And that kind of shows what the current situation with the sun is. Of course, you know, you're not gonna be able to see much on the dark side of the, of the planet. So I always leave that on. Historical imagery. 
Um, so up here along this timeline here, uh, you know, as the satellites pass over, they take more and more photographs over time. So this is the beautiful town of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And this is where I start a lot of my videos from, which is the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Now, if we grab this timeline here, You can see that it changes what the imagery looked like back in 2001, 2000, 1999, 98, and so forth. So you can kind of see what historically the, the landscape used to look like. Okay, you can do other things. Let's uh, go look at different other different aspects. We can go look at the moon, for example. And now it's going to load up the moon and you can go play on that. Let's could go play on Mars. And there's Mars. Let's go ahead and look at the sky. And you can go look at various uh, constellations or, or whatnot. Let's go back home. And you can reset uh, your view on everything based on your navigation settings over here, which I'll show you in a minute. And you can also set a particular view as your start location. So as every time you launch Google Earth, that's where it that's where it starts at. And I will show you what my um, start location is on my videos, which is the Coeur d'Alene Resort. Beautiful five-star resort in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And the 3D imagery is coming into view there. So while it's doing that, we'll go back. And we can obviously also enter full screen. So let's just do that. And it's gonna kick my talking head vid uh, video off the screen there. That's how that works, but let's go back to a regular screen, and um, that's it for the View tab. Okay, that's the View menu. The other menus, I don't really use the Add menu. Everything that's in the Add menu is redundant and basically elsewhere, Then I'll show you in a second. Window is pretty basic, and uh, the Help can be hand handy if you uh, have any questions and it'll launch uh, some, some website information. Okay, so let's switch over to what they call the toolbar, which is this top bar here along the top of the window. Here you have the ability to hide or show your sidebar as well. That's pretty handy. This is adding a place mark. We're downtown Spokane. Here we go, here's the waterfall. So what, what this is, is a, called a place mark pin. And you can see it, automatically entered in in the center of the screen and you do have the ability to move it around move it exactly where you want it and you can see the coordinates they're changing and you can add a title to that and then it saves that in your places so more on my places in a minute let's just call this Spokane Falls and okay and you'll see over here in the left hand side in our, what's called my, my places there's that place mark now that's been entered. So now if we go elsewhere, okay, so now if we click on it, double click on it, it'll take us right to it in the same exact orientation, elevation, everything will look exactly the same as when we initially set up the, the place mark. Okay, so that's place marks, polygons. Polygons are used for measuring things. I don't really use it uh, for my videos and I won't really go into too much of it here, but you can play around with it. It's uh, maybe for like farmers who wanna measure the size of their field, for example, or maybe the size of their crop because they know the size of their field. Um, that would be a good use of a polygon. Okay, so that's polygon. Uh, the next one here is a path. And what we can do is basically drag a line and it's kind of hard to see there. 
And let's say that we had walked this path, for example, hopefully not down the middle of the street, but just for demonstration purposes. And now if we click on it over here and play the path, you can see that the system automatically just kind of tracks along that path, which is pretty darn cool actually. I don't use this feature really hardly ever, and I will show you why in my advanced training where I have a much cooler way to follow the places that we've we've gone. Okay, so that's adding a path. Next one is recording a tour. Before we do that, let's add another place mark. So we got one for Spokane Falls, and we'll just go to this this dock in Hong Kong, and we'll add another place mark. So now we've got two place marks and let's go to Coeur d'Alene Resort. Now we're gonna record a tour. You can't see it. I'm gonna hide my uh, talking head for a second here so you can see it. So down here you can see a little record button. So we'll go ahead and hit record and watch what happens. It's starting the recording now. So if we double click on Spokane Falls, it'll run over there. And it'll pause for a second and then we're gonna double click the Hong Kong and it'll go all the way around the globe over there to where we set that other place mark. And now we'll hit pause or stop. Now it's gonna play it for us with that same tour and it's, I haven't done anything, it's automatically playing it. So there's uh, the trip over to Spokane Falls and then the trip over to Hong Kong. And you can see it played it right here, 28 seconds worth of it right here in this little play area. And if you just close close it right now, it will not save that tour. So we wanna save the tour, so we're gonna hit the little save button. And there it is right there. So now we can close this uh, little play, play bar. And if we double click on it, it's gonna play the, that same tour all over again. Now it's actually saved to the computer. So that's what a tour is. A tour is basically a motion ar with around Google Earth that you save and can create manually. And lots more on tours later. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna get any pretty darn in depth into tours, but that's kind of an introduction. Okay, uh, the next one we've covered already, which is the historical imagery. I showed you that earlier. The next one is sunlight across the landscape. I also showed you that earlier. I don't really use that. Uh, you can play around with it and see what you think. Next, we have Earth, sky, and other planets, and I showed you that earlier as well. So the next one to show you is this measurement tool. And uh, it is just like you would expect. If you draw a line with the mouse, that line will follow the landscape and give you distance. You can do a circle, and again, it'll follow the topography and give you radius area, circumference, etc. You can, you know, as we showed earlier, let's see what that path would have measured out as. You can see it's incrementing up there. and so forth. So that's the ruler function. Then again, uh, you have the ability to email it, print it, you can save the image, and you can also view in Google Maps. So those are redundant features that we saw earlier. So that is almost everything from the toolbar. The other very important part of the toolbar is the sign in. So if you don't already have a Google, Google account, uh, I would recommend you getting one uh, because it will remember the changes that you've made in it. Now it does save changes in your places and we'll cover that in a minute 
on your local drive, but as you can see here, I've logged in with my uh, Airstream Johnny Gmail account. So if I sign in on another computer that doesn't have my places saved on it, <clears throat> as long as I save my places while I'm logged in, I'll be able to pull up those same places on a different computer. So that's pretty handy. And again, I always recommend saving your places uh, frequently. Uh, crashes do occur on, in Google Earth, and uh, I will show you more on that later. So that is the toolbar. In the next video, we will cover the sidebar, so see you there.